It's hard to believe that it's been four years since Sia Kolisi lifted the William Webb Ellis Trophy in just over a month. The box will take to the pitch in France in their first game of the 2023 World Cup. And when they do, those not lucky enough to be in Marseille will no doubt be watching a very special talent anchoring Super Sports TV coverage. Her name is Mutsilisi Mohono, but you already knew that, right? In the cut and thrust of live television and in a sport dominated by men, few, if any, do it better than Mots. We caught up with her ahead of the box final rugby championship game against Argentina last weekend. It's the, the final round of Rugby Championship 2023. It's almost a day of many endings. Celebration as well as we stand here at the Mecca of South African Rugby, Ellis Park. Rugby, one of the country's most loved sports. Millions are glued to their TV screens every single time the Springboks take to the field. But have you ever wondered what it takes to broadcast this game live? Who better to take us behind the scenes than the Queen of Rugby herself? Mutsidisi Mohono, as synonymous with rugby afternoons as Sia, Shosholoza and Set Scrums. On most match days, you'll find her helping millions of viewers at home make sense of an often complex game. Super sports experts at her side. Welcome to my office. Very far away from the rugby field. Yeah, yeah. This is how I relax. This is how I have fun. This is how I get to unwind, you know, with 10 pin bowling, hanging out with family and friends, doing other things that are completely out of the realm of the work that I do. But you see, it goes there. I joined Mutsidisi on a relaxed day out to discover who this extraordinary woman really is. I grew up in a township with Kasi called Katlehong. It's on the East Rand. So I'm a proper Kasi girl, like always in the streets, Lalam Gusha, Box Martini, having fun, being outside. That, that was my deal. So sport has been part of my family the whole time. My father loved football. We used to watch football with him from the time we were babies. By grade five, I understood cricket. Then it's tennis that you watch on television. When I went to high school, the sport of the school is rugby. And for me in grade eight, having to wear my blazer, so in 28 degree weather, just to watch the first team just sounded awful. And the game just looked like this clash, just bah, bah, all the time. Nothing about it said, this is a sport that you would love to watch and be a part of. But then I grew into the culture of the sport. She focuses. When she puts her mind on something, she works on it. And my husband just used to say, you can't start something and not finish it. Mutsirisi's mom, Maputi Mohono, remembers how driven her daughter was, both in and outside the classroom. With all the awards, whether it was sports, whether it was maths, whether it was in academics or what, she will be called. The one time they had a beauty contest, and guess who won? Mutsirisi Mohono! Oh! You, hey, a proud mom because I would always jump up and stuff. After leaving school, Mutsirisi studied accounting at the University of Johannesburg and joined radio station YFM in her second year. It was just so much fun. I was taking my mind off the speak on accounting, which if you studied accounting, then you know it's a killer. But by second year, I just knew broadcasting is my thing. How did that move from radio then to TV? Because I think that's where people know your face yeah. from. So Supersport that year, 2011, um, decided to run a competition called Lady Raga. And they give you this little script that you have to learn off by heart and say to camera. And I came third. Despite not winning, Mutsirisi left a lasting impression and was called back to host a show called Superfan. Her determination and hard work finally paying off. 
when you're the firstborn, there's a little bit more pressure to perform. You know, you have to be the example. They have to see from you how they can get bigger. My mom is the more centered, kind. My dad was strict, but so, so loving. He'd be at least the first person I'd call, be like, Dad, this moment is very, very big. What should I do? How can I calm myself? It would always just, just be cool. You know what you're doing? You know you're great. I've got you. My dream you have you. God has you. You'll be fine. It was absolutely, this game was over. Then in 2019, everything changed. It was the year of the World Cup in Japan, a career-defining moment. She'd been unveiled as super sports anchor for the tournament. Everything had led to this moment. That will separate the good from the world champions. But then, tragedy struck. Two days before the tournament started, I lost my dad to cancer. To see your parent deteriorate is very difficult. And having to tell my team, like, guys, I can't, I can't do this, I can't come in, because I was really a wreck. Inspired by her dad's past encouragement, Mutsirisi returned to the studio two weeks into the World Cup. I remembered how it was for him when he was in difficult moments. He would take the moment to be in the moment, to be in the morning, to grieve. But there was always a time when he was like, okay, despite the grieving, despite the pain I feel, I'm gonna rise above this, I'm gonna try and move forward. And I made it all the way through to the final. And now we stand on the cusp of the very last match, match number 48. Can we say World Cup? Cheers, Nicole, beautiful work. Up on his first spring box. Champions of the world. You were there and you were anchoring. And I stood and I froze and I had goosebumps and tears were streaming down my face, yeah. like they're probably going to do now. Nobody could question you after that. Everyone looked at her and like, she's the queen of rugby, guys. She's, she's got it. Did you recognize it for what it was? The goosebumps are immense. I did. There was a time when I was like, mm -mm, this is not for me anymore. And I'd even pray, I'd be like, God, can you take away the love of broadcasting from me? I don't think I belong here. But that day, I think it was the first time people actually saw me in a, in a happier space, oddly enough. Because I was like, I wish I could share this with my father, but I'm so happy I have this moment. And wherever he is watching from, I'm sure he is also so elated for me. I'm the anomaly. I should, I do not belong in that space traditionally. People who look like me, women who look like me, aren't in that space to be the broadcaster. You know, you sit at a table with the commentators, your event manager greets everybody and jumps over you. And you have a commentator that has to tell them like, hi, this is your presenter. I I'd say you brief her because you're gonna need her. But the 2nd of November, 2019, it validates everything. I hold my head up high, I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm really good at it. Nobody's gonna tell me otherwise. Presenting, it's a job that only a few get to experience, and I'm one of those lucky ones. In studio, we rehearse for hours to make sure that everything is just right. Oh, but when things are live, well, nothing is predictable. I have to think on my feet, I have to listen out for direction, make sure that I have the correct information that I share with you. It's a lot of work and very, very challenging, but oh, so worth it. Joined in studio by former uh, Springbok Super Wing, Brayton Pulsa, former Springbok Captain, Skull Burger. There is video, well there is audio, the there's Skull graphics, and all the while she has to listen to her colleagues. Okay. Mutsirisi works closely with live sports director Tato Monale. Putting a test match to air takes months of meticulous preparation. When she decided that rugby it is not football, not cricket, not dead ball, she enrolled for a coach's course. So she's got level one coaching. That's how serious she takes the club. So when she talks about rugby, even though she might have not played it, she's technically aware of what she's talking about and astute about it. You know, she hosts the whole thing. So whenever we in doubt or we stuff it up, we go back too much and she, she pulls it together. She's so calm, so she should go. So it's just amazing to work for. 
and to work with, because we're a team at the end of the day, and she's our captain. She came through the ranks, so she did all the hard work to get where she has, and she absolutely deserves it. I, I, I think it must be about eight years we've worked together, and um, it's an absolute pleasure going into set with her. I'm pioneering this road now. And I'm happy to do that work because I recognize how difficult it is when there's no one walking ahead of you. I can't afford to be average. When I am good, it makes room for other girls who look like me. If I am not good, the door gets closed because we can't trust girls that look like her. Thanks so much for watching, and we love sharing these unique and eye-opening stories with you. By the way, if you have friends and family living overseas, they can also join in on the Carte Blanche conversation. Tell them to find Carte Blanche, the podcast, now on all major podcast platforms.